Welcome to Applied Logic. In this class, I'm going to teach you about how to plan to write a program. And we do this because across the nation, when people start programming, if they go into an entry-level programming course, roughly half of the people who start a programming course don't successfully complete it. And I define successful completion as a C or better. And so we've brought in the Applied Logic course so that we can separate the logic from the programming, which is not language dependent, from the coding of the program itself. We're going to be using a, the tool Visual Logic, which will let you create flowcharts that actually run, so you can test your logic to make sure it's sound. We're going to start today by talking about the whole programming life cycle. And you'll see that I have that on the board here. The first step is understanding the problem. In a major situation, this would be done using job shadowing, it's usually done by somebody called a systems analyst. And they will typically question people and do job shadowing. And you may be thinking, well, why would you need to do that? Because you don't usually write a program for something that already exists. You're usually replacing something that's done manually with a program. So the way that I've done this in the past, back when I was working in industry, I used to write billing programs where I would collect data from a database and we had a whole set of criteria on how our customer would be billed. Now I was working in freight forwarding and I was writing billing for things like people shipping 20 and 40 foot ocean containers from China to Los Angeles. And the cost would depend on what port it left from, what port it entered to, if it was a 20 foot container, an open top container, or closed top container. But it was being written to replace something that there was an actual person doing by hand. And a lot of programs are like that. You replace a process that's being done by hand. So this process that was being done by hand, to learn to write the program, I had to learn to do the whole process by hand. I had the person who was doing the billing teach me how, show me where she was getting the data. And then in the next step, I planned the program and I wrote out all the rules. If this happens, this is the result. And I clearly wrote out the rules and I went over with her to make sure I had all the rules right. Then I wrote the program. And then we tested it for two weeks where I would put all of that information into my program and she'd do it by hand and we'd make sure that the answers were the same. Once we had that working, we were ready to go and I had a working program. But I wasn't done because prices change. That program was in implementation for years, and after a while, each year the prices would change, gas prices would go up, shipping prices would go, off, so, go up, so I'd have to go back in and change the code. So even once a program has actually been implemented, there's still more programming to do. So that tells you a little bit about what I've done in the past for programming, and that's basically the programming life cycle. The first step is understanding the problem. And you do that through job shadowing, through interviewing, through doing the process by hand. The second step is to plan your logic. And that's really going to be most of what this course is about. Depending on the sort of program that you're writing, the way that you plan your logic is going to change. You're going to find that if you're doing an interactive web application, running in a web browser, you often start by storyboarding, where you draw out where the different fields are and you visually plan what the program is going to look like. If you're doing a video game, if you're doing an interactive game, if you're doing interactive applications for iPhones or for Androids, it's very common to draw the interface. That's known as storyboarding. You'll do pseudocode. Pseudocode is writing logically what a program should do. And it's just like if you ever wrote a large paper and had to do an outline before you did the paper, your pseudocode's your outline. When you do an outline for an English paper, you don't write a line on your outline for every sentence in your paper. But you probably have a line for every paragraph. Now that's about the level you want to do pseudocode for a program. And then the last way would be to flowchart. This is a visual representation of what the program's going to do. And it has different symbols that mean different things. And that's what we're going to spend a lot of this class working on, because we're going to use visual logic, which let us, lets us create flowcharts that actually run. Then you'll write the code. And the code is not language dependent. Or the code is language dependent. The logic is not language dependent. The same logic could be used to create a program in COBOL, 
C++, Java, C Sharp, Ruby. There's lots of programming languages out there. And probably the most common ones that you would start in would be C++ or Java. One of the oldest one is COBOL, which stands for Common Business Oriented Language. And that's an important one that we're going to talk about in a minute. And some of your more modern ones would be like C Sharp or Ruby on Rails. Then you translate the code using a compiler. And what that does is it takes human-like code, because programming languages are relatively human-like, and it translates them into machine code. And each machine has its own underlying language. In fact, COBOL is very important because it was the first standardized language. Years ago, people had to write code for whatever machine that they were working on. By having a compiler, you could write the code once. And as long as you had a compiler for, say, in these days it would be PC or Mac, you know that PC and Mac need different versions. As long as you wrote the code and there was a compiler, you could write the code once. And if you had a compiler for the PC and a compiler for the Mac, you could write the code once and have it run on either machine. So what the, mach what the compiler does is it translates your code into the machine language that the code is going to run on. And then you'll test. And the first step when you're running the compiler is it will do a syntax test. And a syntax is the order of the words. Now this is what gets most people when they're learning to code. Because if you were to write a paper for freshman English and your report was almost perfect and you forgot one comma somewhere, you'd probably still get a pretty good grade if that was the only error in your entire paper. In programming, if you wrote a 10-page program and had one missing comma, the whole thing would not work. And that causes a lot of frustration for people. So we're going to talk about that. That's syntax. Missing and comma, missing a semicolon, misspellings, that's a syntax error. A logic error happens when it's written correctly, but the logic behind it is false. So if you come up with 2 plus 2 equaling negative 4, that means that there was some sort of logic error in the way that you wrote it, that the actual logic behind it is bad. And that usually makes you go back to the logic level. Then you implement it. That takes you out to where you're letting it either you might start by doing an alpha test where people will test it. You will usually implement it by running it alongside of an, the older process, test it, and get it out there. And then you maintain it. And then in the maintenance phase, you will probably come through and add, go through the entire cycle again to add in updates. So that's what we're going to go over through this class. It's a lot about the entire process of programming, but our major function, our major focus will be on planning the logic.